everybody. Welcome to Match Fishing Masterclass Questions. And you're joined by myself and Si Richardson. You right, Si? How are we doing, everybody? Keeping safe, keeping your hands clean. <laughs> you, better, it, yeah. you better because I've got to go to work. What, what do you do, Si? I'm maintenance on Newcross Hospital, so as you can imagine, our job at the moment. Oh. It's not the best job in the world, but it's... It's interesting. Few changes, few developments. Yeah. So somebody's got to do it. Well, they have, mate. Yeah, they have, mate. Thanks for what you're doing, anyway. No problem. Really appreciate it. Them, them hospitals at the moment can't be the best of place. Well, my missus is a nurse, so she's at yeah, it every yeah. day as well. It's not good. But yeah, no. as um, we're all in the same boat at the end of the day. We are. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. hopefully yeah. the old. Sure we'll be at the last one. June the sixteenth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if you don't mind, Si, we've got a question, and I think it's right up your street. Right up your street. So the question is, how do you go about fishing really snaggy pegs? Question mark. Or where carp are absolute nutters? What's the setup you use, both on pole and rods? Cheers from Andy. Okay, then. Well, that's a good question, and it Tip your right, it is right up my street. Yeah. Um, the rods, it's quite simple, really. Um, basically, if you're fishing up against snags and you're fishing a rod, basically, you've got to crank the clutch right up, no bank wind, and you've got to have some proper gear on and a rod that'll handle it. I, I'm still using the same rods that I've been using for over 18 years. I use Sh Shimano Beastmaster Original SDRs in the 911. And I can use <laughs> now that stuff, Stroft L25, right? It don't get broke very often. The odd Volvo or something might have a, a chance, but as far as I'm concerned, if you've got eight pound sensor main line or your own personal preference and an up length on like that. It's going to take some brock busting. Your rod, will, if your rod will calc for it with it, like that rod will, then you can just hold on, lean in, and they'll either come or they'll pull off. End of story. What's that, 0.25? Huh? Is that 0.25? Yeah, that's 0.25 strop. That's me up length for that sort of fishing. How do you get, okay. get it through the, the eyes on the hook side? Quite simple, mate, really. Um, not got a pair of scissors to hand, yeah. but basically, when you cut the line to go through the eye, if you yeah. cut it on the angle, uh, so you're doing it like the point of a hook, yeah. the very tip of your line is basically, what is it, out, out four, out two, yeah, yeah. whatever, it, yeah. it's nothing, yeah. and once that tip's gone through, it'll go through, yeah. and I can quite easily, on a 14 hook, and for that sort of game, air rigging, there's only one up for me, and that's... The Guru, uh, SMWG. Okay, yeah. Really strong hooks, aren't they? MWGs. There's as much steel in them as there is in a garden fork, right? Yeah. They're not going to straighten out. Yeah. But you can quite easily... I, I, and I, I, I have done them with uh, 16 hooks on it. Yeah. And you can go through twice to do an airy. No problem. As long as you put that point on. Yeah. So that's that. I, like I said, ideal look for it. Yeah. That would be more balanced. You can... You could probably get away with slightly diameter, slightly lower diameters yeah. on certain size fish, but the worst ones for it in snags are always two to four pounders. Yeah. They're the ones that cause the problem. The yeah. big fish, you lean into them, they'll nod about, they'll swim out. They don't like snags, the yeah. big fish don't. But the little fish, them are the problem. And this stuff's really, really abrasion resistant as well. Yeah. And you might think our 25 is bad, right? And it's a bit coily. Yeah. yeah you can say that, that's straight off the spot. Yeah. This stuff. Ah, uh, straight and straight out, didn't it? Right, straight out. Yeah. It's got a really, really, really good memory. Yeah. You have know, many our 25 lines that'll do that. Yeah. And that's my personal preference. Okay. And that's when I'm to going to the extremes. My yeah. standard hook length on the rod. Is out twenty. Out twenty. So yeah. If, so if in, a nutshell, better, sorry, oh, in a sorry? nutshell, so in a nutshell, that question is answered by saying you're gonna fish to the snag, 
lock your drag right up, turn your back wind right. off, and then would you hold your rod or put it down? No, but basically I'll just lean full into it and let the rod do all the work. Okay, I mean before before you get the bite, do you hold your rod or put it in your butt rest like? Yeah, yeah sorry, I will. I will have it off across my knee yeah. and I'll have my hand on the rod. And as soon as that tip, if that tip moves, and um, you know, and yeah. you know when it's a bite. Yeah. You know, if you get that one two and it starts to go into it and reel straight okay. away. Yeah. Lovely. Lean into it and lean and pull it. Yeah. Give, it, give it some. Look, look. You've, got, you've got to be prepared to break the rod. If you're not prepared to break the rod, you've got to be prepared to lose the fish. Yeah. But I've got tough confidence in the rods, and I know they won't break. Lovely. Fantastic. Thanks for that, Sorry. So that's the rod part answered. Let's that's move the rod on. Part Let's move on to the pole, which is this is why I thought of you. I've seen you, I've been next to you a few times when, when you've been on fish, and it's scary. It's scary. And I've tried, so I'll just. I answered this question myself, and and I said that I've tried the um, the riot gear method, and well, my riot gear that is not your riot gear. And then I've tried the soft the soft approach where you you fish really light, hook the fish and let them like try and swim out of it. But that just doesn't seem to work. I don't think. So I no. thought I thought of you to answer this question. I don't think there's a better person. So if you don't mind, Si... Your pole set up for fishing to snags or just for fish that are bonkers? Right. Well, basically, I've got two setups for it. I've done the same as you. I've tried the light way. I've tried the soft way. The soft way, the bigger fish will swim out. The little ones will just tie you in a knot. They'll love it. Yeah. So, firstly, this is my first option. And what I basically do is a standard top kit yeah. for my tournament. And get the, just the number two section. Okay? Yeah. With a little bung in the back of that. And for this, I've got an 18 to 20 in this one, right? It's a future 18 to 20 hollow, yeah. right? And that's just in in that bit of the section, yeah. the top, the number two section, okay? Yeah. And I'll use that in two different ways. I'll have one where it's set just nice and pingy, yeah. okay? This is what I use for fishing, like typical pegs like on Canal Pool at Erinbrook, yeah. where you've got five foot deep and you've got rushes and yeah. the F1s and that will swim through it. Yeah. Now, I know you was on a match yourself not long ago and you ended up spending half the day getting your floats back after. Yeah, that was at Coppice Lane, that was. Egg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this is ideal for that, yeah. guys. And basically, you can hook them and ship back straight away. You're totally in control. Yeah. You haven't got... All that loose elastic for them to run through. Yeah. Now you can set that nice and finger, or where I have done on proper snags, and I and especially do on canals for carp, is I use literally about a foot of elastic in the hole of that. Yeah. Okay. So it'll bottom completely bottomed out, and I mean completely. It's probably about ten inches short yeah. of the full length of your top two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it comes out about five foot, five yeah. and a half foot. That's completely bottomed. There's got to be some fish to pull that out. Yeah. I had one with two minutes to go on a Division Two National on the Erewash Canal, and he stabbed me up twice. What a um, In the pan docks, and I had this carp, oh. and it was. I think it was five kilo seven hundred with two minutes to go of the match. Now that snagged me up twice in Pandox and I got it out and I was back in for another chuck. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what got, I what you got, got me there. Bronze, it got me a bronze medal on the uh, on the match, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, and seventeen hundred quid, so that was yeah. worthwhile. But uh, so, so you that's basically it's a shock absorber yeah. and you've got a hook and you've got to ship back straight away. And you just got to keep shipping. If you if that starts to go away, you've got to stop and hold, but never, never give them any because you haven't got enough elastic in to let them swim away. You've got to basically turn them your way and keep them coming. Yeah. And that's the ideal for fishing the long pole. Yeah. Okay. One and sec, Joy. So that that is what I'd class as as riot gear. What was that? Eighteen to twenty. That's eighteen to twenty hollow. Yeah. That's that's as. Probably the heaviest I'd ever go. That is so. However, I know that that is what you class as sensible gear. 
yeah, that old local site, I can, get, I, can, I can get away with F1s on that, with a pingy one, yeah. I can still get away with F1s. Yeah, you'll bump one or two, but you won't lose all your uplands and reeks. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. You don't want to be spending time setting up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And again, with that, with that, if I was in that situation for F1s and small carp and that, in greedy areas, I would only use probably an O18 or O20 hook length. Yeah. I'd use an L22 at least mainline. Yeah. And I'd use a little dot them down. What's well, these are what I use for my shallow fishing. Yeah. Because um, I know it's not going to break. Yeah. Perfect. What's that called? What's that float called? Oh, I don't know. I asked him to make them a few years ago. This one's a little bit but battered, but he's yeah. had some stuff. Believe is me. Is that right. you? You had one of them go through your finger, didn't you? And you're still using the same float. That was a two mil tip. That was, and I'm still using that one. Yeah. <laughs> Strong floats then. Yeah, but that would be more for like fishing long. Yeah. yeah? Or, or, or to snags, or for shallow to snags. Right. That's that sort of setup I'd use for that. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Then we've got the margin, and that's when the bob tops come out. Okay. I land in that then angle. They, they, as you can see, the difference between a tournament tip and a bob top tip. Yeah. Oh my God. That's that is basically a number. That is a that is a, a number three section off an Avanti pole. Yeah. Okay. It fits perfectly on my base master. Yeah. Right. And with this, I've got elastics varying from three point two mil to three point eight mil. Okay. And these have still got a pull of bungie. Yeah. And I use them either with a number three or a number three and a number four. And the beauty of this is you've got a big elastic, you've got a really strong pole that's never going to break. Right? But if you catch it short against snags, you, you can basically, you can pull her up yeah. before you get your bite. Ah, okay, so you can lock it right up. Yeah, strike them out. And as soon as they come out, then you can ease some elastic back out to play them out. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. I've never so, seen that before. I've never seen anyone do that before. It's, that's a really good tip. Yeah, you, as I say, I can do it up to like what would it be, three and a half meters with a number three and a number four section. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and I can do it on that where I'd use the three point eight and shorter. I could use the three point two, yeah. and it gives me it gives me the option of having a play with them, but also beforehand I could really lock it up. Yeah. Pull it out and then be nice and comfortable. I've uh, Nick Speed had a go with the uh, with the top kits against the pads at Larford. He loved it. I believe he made his own up after. <laughs> and the gear I would use for that again would be our twenty five strop. Okay. What straight through? If I'm fishing with paste or a big bait, Drennan, carp yeah. feeder barbless. Yeah. Straight through. Yeah. If I'm doing, using a hair rig, then and, it's going to be the KKM. And I'll probably use an L22 or Clength. Yeah. I might even use an L25 or Clength to L25, but the main line will be L25 for sure. Yeah. You just said oh, okay. KKM, so, yeah, that's an MWG. Did you mean MWG or would you fish with a KKM as well? No, no, KKM's far too weak for this sort of thing. Yeah, an MWG then? SMWG. SMWG, sorry. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. What about Probably. what about your elastics? That's the flat for it as well. What, Dot them down, curb. Dot them down, curb. Yeah, point four curb, boy. Dot them down. Yeah. That was Pat and I worked with Leon many years ago. Best margin float ever. What's that? A two mil bristle as well, sir. Two mil bristle. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Two Two mil bristle, mate. You won't break them. I've never broke one yet. I've tried on a couple and still used them, but yeah. I've, I've not broke one. Yeah. Elastic. The, the, in the big sizes, you've got to go for Vespa. Vespa in the big sizes is by far the strongest and most powerful. Yeah. And it, you cannot break it up. There is, there's also, this is one of the, that, that, that would be ideal, this one. Is that the Vespa? Ideal. For in that other top kit, the normal top kit that I showed you. Yeah. 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 The three point eight mils too savage for that. Um, that's that, that's what you're using through. You just bear me one second. Yeah.
kisses the three point eight mil. Oh my god. That's proper. And that's what I use in between my number three and number four and in my bob tops with the ten mil bush. That's what I use for that. And that's why you need out twenty five. But it will cushion them and I will not bottom you out on it. Yeah. But to touch on something, when you're fishing with out twenty five and etc and you get snagged, then you're in trouble. Yeah. Because you, you can't break it. Yeah. And that's where a natty little invention comes in. And I couldn't get to the, my own personal one at the moment because my gear's all packed away in the back of the shed and everything's in front of it. Yeah. So I've made up one before we spoke. Okay. And this, basically, this is just out of a piece of 8 mil copper pipe yeah. bent round of hacksawed yeah. in the edge of the pipe and including a Stanley knife blade. Yeah. Hammered down the edges to, to keep it in, load yeah. it in, right? And if you carry a spool of string with you in your box, to all time, and if you get snagged, you get this, and your pole, when you've snagged, you pop this over the end of your pole, yeah. attached to a ball of string, yeah. and shake your pole, yeah. so as it drops down, yeah. Until it goes down over the end of your pole, yeah. and then once you've wriggled it down past your float or whatever, and you just pull, and it cuts your line clean off, and you ship everything back without brilliant. smashing your pole, having your eye out, or having a daft float through your finger. Yeah, brilliant, mate. Brilliant. So, one quick question, just to finish us off. So, when you hook the fish, are you keeping your pole straight or loads of side strain? I like to get some bend on it because you've got not much cushion in your elastic. Yeah. You don't want them to lock it out. So you've got to have some confidence in your gear. Get a nice pole in it so your pole absorbs it. But always keep a slow applied pressure so as they don't get a chance to turn away and have the break. Keep them under control. Yeah. And then once you get back and you broke down onto your top kit, just nice and steady. Keep the pole pointing at them at this point. Yeah. Because then there's no friction on your pole yeah. to make them jerk. So you point it at them and gently ease your fish up. As long as you've kept that applied pressure on the way in, that fish should keep coming. And then you'll just get your head in his net and then your job's done. Lovely. Thank you, Si. Really appreciate that. Okay, um, Ricky. Yeah. Uh, quick message to the viewers from you to them. Um, well, everybody's really really going out of the brains at the moment we all want to go fishing don't think you're any different to the rest of us don't go we can't go don't go all you're going to do is risk other people's lives if you do go you can have a crash on the way there and people have got to tend to you forget about it stay in don't go in a couple of months or weeks or whatever we'll all be able to go again and we can have a bee now but until then, stay safe. Don't think about going fishing. Get in the garden, chuck a bomb for your cat, do something daft, yeah. have the crack, go the fishing, lads. Perfect. Thank, thanks, Sai. And you heard it from Sai. There's no one who loves the fishing more than Sai. So take care, stay safe, guys, and we'll see you later. Stay safe. Cheers, Sai.